In this video, we're going to start working on our grenade. So what we're going to accomplish, hopefully, at the end of this video, is actually having our grenade class and the ability to throw it, such as this. And have the grenade react how it would normally. So we're going to end up rewriting this in C++. I went ahead and made a blueprint version as kind of a point of reference and example. So we are ready to begin. We're pretty much just going to be altering our default first person character here. So as you can probably assume, we are on the first person template, hence this little tag right here indicating so. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and import the grenade, the animations, the textures, and get those set up, make sure they're good to go. And then we're going to move on and strip out the first person character class so it no longer has the guns or anything like that and we set up the inputs to throw it and we will eventually have the result similar to this. I'm going to go ahead and actually rename this folder here. You can ignore it. Speaking of, there it is. So we're going to go ahead and create a new folder. Let's call it grenade. Okay, not sure why you're... Ah, so, eh, whatever. So inside a grenade, we're going to go ahead and import everything. So in the description, you will have a download to a compressed file. Extract that, and you will see these contents inside of it. So these are all the project-related files. If you want to look through them, you can. But the one you really want to focus on is Unreal Engine. Inside of here, we have what contains the grenade, the textures for the grenade. This one can actually be moved back and the animation. So we have the grenade animation and the arms animation. So we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop these in. So let's, in our grenade folder, let's just drag and drop for the FBX import. This is for the animation, which we don't have. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually hit cancel and import everything but animations first. So grenade and textures. So now in here, we're importing the mesh, just hit import. Everything else is set up. Now we can go ahead and import the animations. And this one is for the grenade throw. That's for the grenade. So that would be this one here. Import. Then this one for the mannequin skeleton. So we're going to go ahead and import that to the SK mannequin arms. And hit import. Here we have these two. We have the grenade throw. And the grenade on the pin and all that kind of stuff. Now let's quickly set up the material. So open up the grenade material. We can delete the white parameter there. We don't want it to be white. And we're going to drag this into a smaller window. Go to our textures. And why is the animations inside of the textures? I'm going to drag that back out to the root. There we go. So inside of the textures, we have the albedo, mix map, and normal. We're going to open up the mix map, uncheck sRGB, and drag and drop these three textures right into our material editor. So we're going to organize them as the albedo, normal map, then the mix map, and connect them up. So for the albedo, we're going to connect RGB to base color. For the normal, RGB to normal. For the mix map, Red channel goes to occlusion, green to roughness, and blue to metallic. Then just hit save. Now open up our, well, it's actually already set, and we now have our grenade. So we have all that. That is good to go and set up. Now we want to go ahead and strip out our first person character to get rid of all the unnecessary stuff that I don't want to be in the way. So I'm going to go over here to the header file and just find everything related to FP gun and VR and just completely get rid of it. There's that. Gun offset, projectile class, fire sound, motion controllers. On fire and on reset VR. Our touch data. And enable touch screen movement. And I think that's pretty much everything. So now over here in our grenade tutorial character, we're going to have to 
make the same changes. So we delete everything we pretty much got rid of. Oops. Just clean it out. Everything and begin play. That can all be ignored. We no longer have fire or reset VR. Don't have the on fire function. Don't have any of these. And we don't have enable touchscreen movement. Okay, we are pretty much good to go. Go ahead and just remove the includes as well. And I think that's pretty much everything there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and right click and build the project. Close down the editor, make sure there's no problems, make sure you save. And we will go from there. I'll see you when we, well, I'm going to go ahead and relaunch the project. I'll see you here in a second. Alrighty. Back inside of the editor here, we have our new character. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this old one and go to first person CPP and open up that blueprint. I'm going to go ahead and this is from previous what I was doing for testing, so I'm going to delete that. And we have our basic character here. Nothing related to the gun or anything. Now the only difference that you'll have is I already disconnected this. So let me just reconnect it back up. You can ignore what I just did. And it, you will be pretty much met with something that looks exactly like this. So I hit play. Everything's the same. We're just playing the same animations and all that kind of stuff. So we're good. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and actually create our grenade class that we're going to use. We're going to need to set it up so we play an animation. And we need to have a skeletal mesh on it. So we're going to have two, well, one component for the skeletal mesh. That's going to be our root component. And then we're just going to simply have a animation. So it's a U animation asset, I believe. So we're going to come over here to C++ classes. Open up the grenade tutorial folder, or whatever yours is called. Right click, new C++ class, actor. I'm going to call it grenade. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this in its own folder just for keeping it somewhat organized. So I'm going to do forward slash grenade. So this will be the path, and hit create class. That's just so it doesn't appear in this list right here. So now we give that a second, and it should appear over in either Visual Studio or Rider ID like I'm using. And we now have our class. Let's go ahead and open that up. The .cpp in our header. I'm going to go ahead and delete the tick function because that's not going to be used. And we had to fix this include here, so we can just erase the initial portion, so it's just grenade.h for the include. And set b can ever tick to false. So basically the way it's going to work is on begin play, I want an animation to fire because that grenade's only going to be spawned whenever we actually go to throw the grenade. So when it's spawned, that means the animation's playing, because the animation is going to be what triggers the spawning of the grenade. Well, not the animation, but the function that triggers the animation to be played is going to be what spawns the grenade. So we're going to play our animation here. So play, growing, animation. Add our .h. I'm going to go ahead and make, well, we'll just do it right here. We're going to go ahead and add our static, or sorry, skeletal mesh component. So U, property, edit, defaults only, category equals grenade. Then we're going to forward declare it. So class, u skeletal mesh component. Let's do grenade mesh. Back in the .cpp in our constructor, grenade mesh equals create default sub object. The type is u skeletal mesh component. And then just give it the name skeletal mesh component. All right, now we just have to include skeletal mesh component and we're good to go. So hashtag include components skeletal mesh component dot h. Then the last thing, root component equals grenade mesh. So that way our mesh is our root because that's what we want there. So we should have our grenade class pretty much set up. And what I'm gonna do is in our grenade tutorial dot h, I'm going to actually create 
a simple pointer to this grenade. So I'm gonna actually I'm not gonna do it right there. A little bit. I'll do it on every begin play as well. So we're gonna have a or declare, so class a grenade. Grenade. This is gonna be our pretty much our constant reference to that grenade. So when we go to throw it, we spawn it, we set it to a grenade. And we can kind of, if we ever decide to, we can do whatever we want with it. So we may have to make use of this. And just in case we access, we have to access it from Blueprint, I'm going to do U property, Blueprint, read, write. And as usual, category equals grenade. Oops. So there we go. Uh, let me, I think that should be pretty much everything. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a quick function that we're going to call to throw the grenade. So I'll just do it underneath where we created our grenade. It's going to be a, uh, let's see, void throw grenade, create the implementation, move that down below our setup uh, player input component. And in here, we just spawn it and we throw it. So, in order to spawn it, we want to have access to the grenade class. So, U property, or edit, we'll just do it at default only, category equals grenade, then we're going to do E subclass of, or declare class A grenade, grenade class. And that's all we have to do there. So inside of the throw grenade, we're just going to do if grenade class. We want to spawn this class. So grenade equals get world spawn actor. Type is going to be a grenade. And then the class is going to be grenade class. And then we're going to end up attaching it. So now that we're making use of the a grenade class, we want to go ahead and include it. So up here, do include let's that be grenade grenade dot h we spawned our grenade now we want to go ahead and make sure just to be safe that it is valid so if grenade it, it should be we're going to attach it to our first person mesh so grenade attached to component the component we want to attach to is our mesh, so we're in a first person, so we want to do our mesh 1p for first person. And the next parameter is f attachment transform rules. We want to snap to target, including scale or not including scale in our case, it doesn't matter. Then the next should be the socket, so f name uh, hand underscore r for the right hand. And that should be it. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and just make sure everything is okay for right now. So that means I want to restart my editor and see what happens because we got to go ahead and set up our grenade class as well, set up the mesh and all that kind of stuff. So here we have our C classes. Let's go to our grenade folder, find our grenade create a blueprint version of it, so bp underscore grenade, and put it in our grenade folder. There we have it right here. Let's go ahead and use our grenade mesh. Let's go ahead and set it to our grenade, which would be this one. Like so. Save it. And one thing I want to look at is the physics asset. Okay, it does have a capsule around it, so it will have collision. And then if we click on our mesh and look down. We want to make sure simulate physics is off, but we will want to have some form of collision. So I don't want to have collision initially because that's going to interfere. It's like when we're moving around and stuff like that, the collision is going to interfere with us. So we have to set the collision right before the grenade actually has an impulse set to it. 
So for point of reference, we press T, we throw the grenade, so we're playing the animation to throw the grenade. And as that triggers, we spawn the grenade. We attach that grenade to our hand, which we just did in C++. And you can ignore this portion, that's for because I didn't have any movement. I didn't want to set it up. So we're up to this point right here. And what we're going to do is in our animation on our hands, we trigger a we triggered a blueprint event to fire. So this blueprint event here, what it did was we got the grenade mesh. We detached it from ourselves, so from our hands. Or sorry, we did that from the grenade. Then we got our skeletal mesh. We enabled physics on it. We set the linear velocity to zero so that way our animation didn't have any influence on the direction or anything like that. And then we added an impulse based upon the direction we're looking. So wherever we look, that's the direction we want the impulse to go. So we're shooting it straight out in the dead center of where we are looking. So, yeah. This video is getting a little long, so I'm just going to do something small to wrap it up here. Uh, one thing I, I want to change is I want to go ahead and get rid of this stupid little crosshair that's not even centered in the screen. That's one thing that really bugs me about this little template. So we're just going to go over here to gamemode.cpp. Here's our HUD class. Just comment it out and simply recompile. And that should it should get rid of that. So yeah, now it's gone. So we don't have the little distractor there because a lot of people, have, and those people have a tendency of when I do my aiming animations and stuff like that, while it is centered right in the middle of the screen, it looks like it's off center because that crosshair that the first person template comes with is not actually centered. So that was just a just a quick little point out. Go ahead and delete the grenade assets folder. So if you ever have a folder that doesn't delete like this when we tried to, you can come over here to your project, go to content, find that folder, and delete it from here. And then whenever you reload the project up, it should actually be gone. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video for now. This is going to be part one. And in part two, we're going to actually trigger the animations. And then part three, I think that's when we're going to go ahead and add the impulse and throw it. So that way the videos aren't too long. So anyways, uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one on that. And if you want to help support me, I do have a Team Deathmatch series that I released for Patreon members only. You can find the link to that in my description. And if you don't care about that, but you do feel like supporting me anyways, you can just subscribe to any tier that is listed there. If you have any questions or anything like that to any of my videos, you can also find my Discord. And if you join that, uh, feel free to ask away, and I will try to answer any questions you have. So, I'll see you in the next video.